my name is Rihanna and I'm a third year mechanical engineering student and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we cover in first year mechanical engineering and just give you a little overview of every single module that you study. So the first one, engineering skills and applications, that's basically just giving you an overview of what engineering is and what sort of applications you will use such as like CAD software, so like designing, the sort of more practical stuff like you can see in this lab. Um, and yeah, it's basically just getting you up to speed of where you need to be in terms of engineering as a whole, so that when you do study the other modules then in a bit more detail, you'll think, oh, okay, this makes sense because I've learned about that in such and such. Um, then you have engineering analysis one and two. So you do the first one before Christmas, the second one after Christmas, and they literally just are getting you back up to speed with your mathematics uh, capabilities and it's more or less exactly what you would have done in A level maths if you did further maths then even better because you've basically covered everything you need to know and um, what I will say is they do teach you everything from the basics again so as long as you do have a basic understanding of like integration, differentiation, simultaneous equations, that sort of thing then it's basically just sort of slightly building on that prior knowledge so that should be fine. Um, so then strength of materials is a bit sort of chemistry like more so that you would have done maybe at GCSE level it's nothing too complicated and it's just giving you an insight of like how material properties work. Um, there is also another module which is the introduction to materials engineering so you do that first you get a bit of knowledge about how materials work and then in your second semester you just go a bit more into depth on that so you do some testing on different materials to see how they deform so you've got some sort of plasticky materials that will stretch whereas other materials like glass for example would just shatter so they, they have different properties and that's the sort of thing you'd learn about so that you know which materials are more suited to different applications such as the former student car for example you wouldn't want to make it out of glass um, so then you have engineering design which building on the first module of skills and applications you're using those skills that you've just been taught and introduced to to then sort of design some very basic engineering things and um, so you'll just you start off very very basic they'll teach you everything from scratch so you won't feel behind anyone else if some people have experienced these sort of applications in the past like you, you won't be behind anyone else so don't worry about that um, and then you just learn how to use the software, how you will like, model some 3D sort of structures that you then potentially go on to produce and manufacture and get to sort of make yourself. So that's really fun. It's a bit similar to if you did any sort of design work in like DT or like technology subjects at school. Um, so yeah, that's really fun and practical. You get to work in groups with people. You get a lot of time in the labs where you'd be sort of in a lab environment like PC labs but there will be demonstrators walking around who are either academic staff or postgrad students so they know how you feel in that position and they can come around and sort of help you out and just give you any sort of tips so there's always someone to come and help you. Um, engineering mechanics is very similar to mechanics that you may have done at A level maths so it's just sort of balancing forces in a mathematical kind of way, kind of integrating maths and physics. Then you have manufacturing technology which is a lot more sort of design technology based but the theory side of it so you learn about how different machines work, how um, different products are manufactured so you'll be given sort of like a blank piece of material and you'll then be taught how you would form it and cast it make it into the product that we use every day um, so that's more sort of theory based and go to your lectures then you'll take some time at home to study that and then you'll have an exam. Um, engineering professional development is basically giving you an insight of how a professional engineer would work in their day to day lives so that if you do choose to graduate and go on to work in an engineering sector you basically know what to expect so they give you some tips on like professional writing I think they help you build a CV which is really handy then for when you graduate um, and just sort of logistics stuff like IT skills and how the engineering sort of more technical stuff that you learn in your other modules is then applied in like a real life scenario so that's again really interesting and you can see where all the different modules sort of tie together and finally we have 
fluid mechanics and thermodynamics. They're separate modules, but they do sort of come hand in hand. Some universities will do like thermal fluids, so they, they are they are their own modules basically, but you could sort of say that they do come together. So fluid mechanics is also fluid, so like air and liquid and how they flow in different scenarios. So for instance, an F1 race car, you could study how the air flows over the front of the car and hence why the cars are sort of more streamlined and that sort of design. Or then you could go a bit more sort of like infrastructure and pipes and you'd understand why pipes are designed a certain way to allow the water to flow through them, for example. Thermodynamics is a bit more sort of temperature and like heat transfer. So you'd have a system and sort of outdoors, indoor temperature and you'd learn about how the insulation works to keep the cold out and keep the heat in, that sort of thing. They're a little bit more heavy on the maths and the sort of physics equations and things, but you do get given them all. You don't really need to memorise anything for the exam as such. They'll give you like an equation sheet. You just need to know how to apply those and the lecturers are really helpful. They'll give you plenty of like practice questions. Some modules will have sort of like a mid-term test in sort of just like a, a classroom environment, so nothing too intimidating, just to give you an idea of the type of questions that you may expect in an exam. Um, so I would say that on average there's about 15 to 20 hours a week, that being like lectures and um, practical lab times. So say like 15, 10 to 15 hours a week of just lectures that you should really attend for your exams and stuff, and then another five hours or so of like practical lab times, whether that's in the workshop or the PC labs. And usually the PC labs are more there for your benefit. You don't have to go to them, but I would recommend that you do just because that's when you're going to get the help of the people that you going to like. It's going to be the most beneficial to you. If you do, then just want to go home and work on it yourself. I would probably recommend like at least an hour or so, maybe two or three hours a day. Depending on how you feel and how much work you've got at that particular time, you should usually just try and keep on top of stuff so that you don't let it build up over time.